Welcome to Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. If you've watched my videos on lumbar stenosis or lumbar disc herniation, you'll see that lumbar epidural steroid injections are one of the mainstays to non-surgical treatment for back pain or leg pain. This is done by taking steroid, which is a very strong anti-inflammatory, and placing it over the nerve so that the nerve can learn to live in a small space. It doesn't actually solve the problem, but what it does is it shrinks the nerve to see if the body can heal itself and it buys the body some time to heal itself. Epidural steroid injections are performed by interventional radiologists, anesthesia pain management doctors, physiatrists, and even surgeons, but no matter who's performing the injection, make sure that they perform at least 200 or so a year, if not more, and that it's always guided by CT guidance or fluoroscopy x-ray guidance. Lumbar epidural steroid injections come in two different flavors. The first is a central lumbar epidural steroid injection where the medicine goes over the center aspect of the spinal canal and it coats the nerves. There's another type called a transforaminal epidural steroid injection, which is the same thing as a selective nerve root injection, but that involves taking a needle and coating the individual nerves, depending on which nerve your doctor chooses to put medicine over the nerve. The term epidural uh, just means outside of the dura. Epi is outside, dura is the dura. So the nerves and spinal cord live in fluid. That fluid's covered by a thin sac, it's then a saran wrap. And that's what's represented by yellow here. So an epidural steroid injection simply means an injection outside of the dura. In general, there's always a local anesthetic that's just used to numb the skin. So the needle that goes in, that goes over the nerve, uh, isn't felt as much. Inside that main needle that goes over the nerve is a long-acting anesthetic, usually called Marcaine, combined with a steroid uh, or cortisone. Steroid is essentially the same thing as cortisone. There are many different types of steroids on the market, and your doctor will choose the right one for you. Epidural steroid injections are either done in the office or at a surgery center. The advantage of the office is that it's probably a little bit more convenient than the surgery center, but the advantage of a surgery center is that you're given some local uh, anesthetic along with twilight IV anesthetic, a little bit like you're having a colonoscopy. It's not full anesthesia, but it's definitely enough sedation that it takes some of the anxiety and probably some of the pain away. Lumbar epidural steroid injections, as you'll see, are always done face down, whether they be a central epidural or a transforaminal epidural steroid injection. Today, you'll be watching Dr. Ramo Naidu, one of my partners and a nationally recognized anesthesia and pain management doctor, perform a selective nerve root injection in one of our patients. Remember, a central lumbar epidural is very similar to a selective nerve root injection, so the process we're showing you at the surgery center is gonna be very similar. Before any injection, you'll notice that the entire team does a pause and does a timeout just to verify that the team is doing and injecting the correct level and also the correct side, the right side or the left side. So tell us about yourself, <laughs> tell us where your pain is. <laughs> My pain's gonna get a lot better today. <laughs> I think so. Which leg is it going down? Left. Left, left, left sided side. buttock and leg. Yeah. yeah. So it's sciatica. Yes. All right. So we're hoping to put some medicine over and make it better today, okay? That is, sounds like a good plan. All right. We're gonna see you inside. Okay. This right. is a time out for Joseph, born 5'11, 1943. Consented to have left lumbar 5 and sacral 1 selective nerve root block. Left side is the correct side. Dr. Naidu performing allergies are to penicillin, causes itching, no anaphylaxis. Perfect. And then 250? Yeah. Perfect. And he's been off the Deliquest for four days. Four days. Perfect. Do you guys Sound want to introduce? Food? Let's introduce the team here. Uh, Matthew Walker, circle check. Dr. Naidu, interventionalist. Girl fat x ray. Tina, <laughs> RN sedation. Christy, RN sedation. Okay, so we got the x-ray machine there. Dr. Naidu is studying some of the imaging. Continuing digging. Okay, so the first medicine I'm gonna give you is Versed. That's a anxiolytic and it also makes you forget things. Amnesiac, as we say in the business. Hmm. And then the second drug I'm giving you is fentanyl. Um, that is for pain. Although Dr. Naidu uses a generous amount of local at the site, you'll be talking to us throughout the procedure. We'll ask you how you're doing. And you can always call out to me if you feel like you need more pain medicine, you're not doing okay, I'm here to help you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hi. Okay. I'm gonna have you roll over toward me. I want your belly down here and your face in that massage pillow there. Okay. Is it comfortable where it is? 
Uh, as much as face pillows can. Okay, perfect. That's what I like to hear. This is a L5-S1 transforaminal epidural steroid injection. And Dr. Naidu and Matt are mixing up their meds. We got... Betamethasone, also known as Celestone. There's a little steroid going in to the syringe. And we'll leave The needle's not actually that big that goes into it. Nope, this it's is just, just a drop. drop the uh, right, medicine yep. there. The needle is very okay. small. Perfect. Three. So always double verification of expiration date and medication. Safety first. Perfect. And then quarter percent B pivot gain. Beautiful. Yep. And then contrast dye, please. And this again is just to watch the flow of the inject date. Perfect. Beautiful, thank you. Oh, there's so much stuff happening. They're getting x-ray over there, getting in the right position. And that's the needle. Let's see how that looks. And then I always- What is the world's smallest needle? And I bend the needle, because this helps me steer it to the right location. So you see it has a little curve. So I can steer around and do like an S curve. I like that, that's the target. smallest little needle. So we have two of them. These are 23 gauge. And then to numb, I actually do choose the smallest needle you can get. This is a 30 gauge needle. That is the world's smallest needle. Thank you. It's like getting acupuncture. It is. In fact, it's smaller than acupuncture. Perfect. So this is the S1 foramen. I'll start with a little numbing. Joe, a little pinch here. Sorry, bud. Doing okay? Yep. Perfect. A little pinch here, Joe. Perfect. There you go. Lots of numbing here for you. So two needles for two nerves there. Correct. And he's watching where the needles are going. And Joe, let us know if you feel anything going down your leg, okay? Everything looks great. That feels good. You doing okay? I'm okay. All right, we're getting real close here. We're knocking on the door. So we got some osteophytes here blocking. There we go. I'll do a lateral here. So perfect on the S1. Again, Joe, let me know if you feel anything down your leg. All right, let's go over to AP. I'll we'll check with a little contrast, make sure it's spread along the L5 nerve root. Again, Joe, you may feel this, you may not. Go for it. There we go. Really uncomfortable or sort of uncomfortable? Very uncomfortable. Okay. okay. And a shot there, we'll go real slow. It's a tight space. Nice. So you that's the nerve root there. there. Right. Which is what we want to see. Sorry about that, Joe. And now we'll come in from below with the S1. Same deal here, shouldn't be as uncomfortable. Was that pain corresponding to the pain you're generally having here, Joe? Or is it different shot there? It was different. Okay. Are you still feeling it or is it better? It's subsiding so. Okay. So I'm gonna inject really slowly here on the L5 because it's a tight one here. And you tell me if it's too uncomfortable for you. So sometimes when the space is very, very tight, as the medicine goes in, it irritates the nerve, and that might actually be a sign that that nerve is the issue. He's injecting a little bit slower. 
really, really slowly. Because then it's lower volume that goes over the nerve. But that's not uncommon to see is when people have severe, severe stenosis or narrowing, when the medicine goes over, it becomes more painful. Joe, you did You're it. You're all set, buddy. You did it. Okay. Oh, Way to hang in there. I know. You did it. Not fun for you. Sorry, that's rough for you. Okay, there's a bed next to you, Joe. With your left hand, you should feel it next to you. You're going to roll over onto your back. There you go. That was fun. <laughs> so usually, you know, this can take up to one to two weeks to work. Okay. All right. So we will see you in follow-up in one to two weeks. Okay, buddy? Okay. In the meantime, you make seafood pasta. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. It's been a pleasure meeting everybody. He um, has some allergies, he's an allergy to uh, penicillin. It's not anaphylactic, just itching. Okay, thank you. Two major risks for lumbar epidurals. Uh, similar to the cervical interlaminar, the risk is a, a posterior puncture headache if we do the interlaminar approach. And, and for the transforaminals, uh, there's a risk of nerve injury, which is extremely, extremely low if we, if we hit the nerve. And let's say somebody gets a posterior puncture headache. Um, it's usually positional. It's worse when they're up, better when flat. What do you recommend them do? Fluids and then using non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs if they can. Uh, caffeinate, uh, which sounds strange, but it's true that caffeine can help with some of those headaches. And it, if the thing, if the headache gets really severe, you're really limited, then we can use tryptan medications like Imitrex. Okay, so first drink a lot of water, drink a lot of coffee, and lay six. flat. Yep, lay flat. And if it's uh, worse, let us know. I usually tell patients that it's good to rest and not work out or do any strenuous exercise for up to a week just to let the steroid marinate around the nerve. And also understand that sometimes there may be some local anesthetic benefit, meaning that local anesthetic gave that nerve a little bit of relief, but it can take up to two weeks for that nerve pain to get better. So don't despair if it's a week and you're not better. I tell patients not to get too worried. It can take up to two weeks to work. In terms of frequency of injections, we don't like patients getting more than four injections a year because it can cause osteoporosis. It can also cause blood sugar problems. And in general, we like to separate injections by at least six weeks. In my practice, if two injections don't work or the injections are pretty short-lived, either have patients live with the pain or have it surgically fixed if it's a surgically correctable problem. After the injection, if you've had it done in the office, it's probably a good idea to have somebody drive you home, although technically you could drive home by yourself because you've, you haven't had sedation. If it's done at a surgery center because of the sedation that's given, you absolutely need to have somebody drive you home. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit about lumbar epidural steroid injections. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions in the comment box below.